What's up players, Upswing Poker VP Mike Brady here. A lot of you have been requesting content specifically for low and micro stakes games, so today we're obliging with a 10 minute video segment taken straight from the Upswing Lab training course. This segment features Cash Game Pro Gary Gazzy B. Blackwood moving down in stakes to demonstrate a winning strategy in 5 cent, 10 cent games on Poker Stars. Without further ado, let's watch Gazzy put in some 3 bets. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my Play and Explain for Upswing Poker. My name is Gary Blackwood, aka Gazzy B123. I'm going to do a really cool four part. Um, yeah, uh, uh, the next four Play and, Expl Play and Explains are going to be a little different. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to play uh, live play, Play and Explain, uh, one at 10 NL, one at 25 NL, one at 50 NL, and one at 100 NL. Um, reason being is that. Um, I think you guys will learn a lot from watching, you know, the 200 zoom and the 500 zoom play and explains, but uh, there's going to be a lot of things that are happening there that don't happen in your games. And on the flip side, there are going to be a lot of things that happen in your games that, you know, you might not see if you're watching a 200 zoom video or a 500 zoom video. So, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the next four videos. It's going to be a lot of fun. I've just recorded this video um, and nothing happened. Quite literally nothing happened for 40 minutes. And I thought, you know what, that's not really fair on you guys. So let's go ahead and do it again. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, so the emphasis is going to be on value betting thinly on the river. Um, and overfolding slightly on the river as well, I think, is uh, is going to be appropriate. So let's get started. I've done a lot of tagging over the last 45 minutes or so, so you'll see a lot of like fun players, etc. tagged. Queen Jack suited on the bottom, we're gonna squeeze. This guy's probably gonna be a weaker player. Um, this guy looks like he's a reg, so he's gonna fold appropriately. So let's go ahead and squeeze to 13 bigs. Trying to isolate this guy, which is exactly what happens when we flop a royal drop. Really easy C-bet, in all seriousness, you know, we want to see bet really wide on this board. When he calls twice pre-flop, he's going to have a lot of pocket pairs in his range. And obviously, he's just doing very poorly on this texture. Over on the left, we defend ace-9 offsuit. We don't call in the king-queen-4. It's a little, a little too, um, it would be a little too wide to call there. 10-9 off is not going to be an open in the cutoff. We're going to have Jack-10 off and above. I'm going to record for 20 minutes and then pause the recording and then record the rest of the video um, just so I can take a wee break. But yeah, like I said, I recorded for 45 minutes and, and just nothing happened, so I thought it'd be best to to restart. Uh, King-10 off in MP is fine. Queen 10 off, I wouldn't open, and King 9 off, I wouldn't open either. Uh, in terms of my three bets, I go 10 9 suited plus. We have some really low frequency, 9 8, 8, 7, 7, 6. But we're talking about like, you know, 8 or 9% at the very most. Uh, for those that don't know my RNG, uh, low is aggressive. So obviously 95 would be very passive. Um, opening all my suited ace X under the gun. It's very uh, second nature for me to tag people. So if you see me doing it without any real reads, it's just uh, something that comes second hand to me these days. It's something I do subconsciously. So uh, yeah. And as well as that, like I work with a lot of students and they play on stars and they never tag anyone. You know, we'll review their footage and they just don't tag anyone. Um, Stars is by far the best software. It's just so easy. Like I can just tag this guy very, very easily. Um, so please make sure we are tagging people appropriately. Jack eight suited is kind of close. I think Jack nine plus is going to be my opening range. Uh, eight seven off. I actually think we missed a three bet here. The RNG said a three bet. We have a low frequency three bet, uh, but we've missed it. Uh, not continuing here. We do have the back row straight draw. Jack ten I would probably call, but eight seven we're going to go ahead and fold. Ace King Suda definitely going to play. Going to squeeze it. Uh, twelve and a half as a minimum here. Yeah, let's go twelve and a half. If he goes two point five x, then we probably go thirteen. Obviously, a great flop for us. Anything that's ace higher, king higher is good. Going to see about one third here. 
I don't want to see any quarter pots, any sneaky check backs. The board's pretty wet. We've got the best hand a lot of the time. One third is fine. We don't want to have two sizes, you know, we don't want to split our range, etc. It's doing snap jams, not loving life, but obviously not folding. Good start. Okay, 10 9 suited is not a pure call. Uh, we're a little deeper, actually. I think we can call this. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and call here versus this 3 bet. Obviously, when we're deeper, we widen our calling range. Uh, 6 to 2, so we're just going to check fold. Uh, 6 5 off, we're not going to open. I think 8 9 off is the, the lowest that we open there. Not full, not defending eight six offsuit versus anyone, so we can just snap fold it. Five three suited, we're not calling. It's a big leak, guys, to be calling hands like this on the button. You might say to yourself, you know, this guy's called, so we're getting good odds, etc. It's a massive leak, so let's just go ahead and fold. No, like suited one gappers and stuff on the button. Let's just go ahead and fold. I would imagine that um, people who play ten and L and twenty five and L, etc. Um, they'll have solid fundamentals, but they will leak money in spots like that. You know, calling multi way, etc. Your equity goes down multi-way. You can defend a little wider from the big blind, of course, but you can't call hands like that on the button there because you're going to get squeezed. Um, and it's just not a very good hand at all. So you could probably call that on the button. As well as that, you've already got a big blind in there, so your price is a little better. Um, but yeah, I would imagine that one of the leaks that people have in these games is they call too wide multi-way with trashy hands like that. And they defend the big blind too wide as well. 9-7 off is right on the line. Sorry, guys. Um, I think I'm going to fold it. Oh, actually, he's opened to 2.3. This is an easy call. Sorry, I thought he'd open to 3x. So, obviously, the smaller people open, the more frequently we can defend. Um, because our price, our immediate odds and our implied odds are much better. Our opponent checks. We're going to stab this a decent amount. Uh, my stab size in general is one third, unless the board is really bad for us which point I use three quarters, i.e. ace high and king high. So he's supposed to check a decent amount there. Whether or not he actually does is another story, uh, which means I'm going to stab a little more religiously when people do elect to check the small blind to us because he should be checking the small blind quite a lot there, but I don't think that's the reason he's checked. I would imagine he's checked because he has nothing. Uh, on the right-hand side, we've rolled a zero. <laughs> we cannot get more aggressive than that. Um, so we three bet, we three bet hands like this at some frequency. And again, this is going to be one of the leaks that a lot of people have is they don't three bet enough from the big blind versus under the gun and MP. Um, over on the left table, easy three bet. Let's talk about my sizings real quick. If somebody opens to 2.5x, I use 3.2x. But if somebody opens to three bigs, I use just the 3x, uh, three bet size. Uh, queen 5.4 is going to be a half pot C bet. Going to see about this hand always. The board's pretty wet. Um, he can continue a decent amount. A lot of people think, oh my god, I've got top set, I have to check back. That's definitely not the case. If you think about all the 7-6s and the 7-8s and the pocket 6s through jacks and the, uh, yeah, his continue range is, is wider than you think. Um, I'm going to bet the turn. Again, we bet half pot on the flop. Really easy at 100 bigs. If you bet half pot on the flop, bet half pot on the turn and shove the river. Um, 10, 7, 8. Let's not think about our hand being as good as it is with the open ended straight flush draw. Let's think about what size our range wants to bet. Um, you know, we can't bet small here with pocket kings and bet really big with pocket sevens. We want to be consistent. On these sort of middling textures, if I do bet, I use the half pot size. I would bet this hand like 80, 85% of the time, I think. Uh, gonna complete in the small band here. Not gonna complete too religiously today, but anything that's suited can definitely get called. Uh, gonna check back the turn. Um, we want to continue with our stronger top pairs. We want to check back our weaker top pairs at some frequency. Yes, we have a lot of like, you know, we can, can complete, we can uh, improve on a six, a jack, a diamond, etc. But uh, I mean, our hand at the moment is a pair of tens with a nine kicker. So we're gonna check back. Really nice river. As well as our hand doesn't need any protection, which is the beauty of checking back hand like this. When he leads out, we just cycle. Nothing else we can do. 
And that's one of the reasons we check back the turns. We allow people to bluff like that. Seems like a good spot to end the video with that well-played and well-timed bluff catch from Gazzy B. Great stuff from him there. If you picked up a thing or two today, like this video or comment below to let Gazzy know. If you want more high-value training like this, including the entirety of Gazzy's Micro Stakes Play and Explain series, sign up for the Upswing Lab today. There is a ton of great content in there. Thanks for watching.